Hey guys, in this video, we are continuing along in our unofficial guide to Wirecast online course. And we are going to go over shots and layers. The two big things for shots and layers with Wirecast is the ability to add those layers or those shots into your production and then layer them appropriately. And so in this video, not only are we going to add a bunch of shots, organize them in layers, but we're going to take an individual shot and, add, and build layers into those shots, which might be easier for you depending on how you want to do your production. So we'll talk about the pros and cons of those two different ways of using Wirecast. This is something I wanted to show you guys because I think it really clears up how Wirecast can be used and controlled. Um, these are the layers the five layers of Wirecast down at the bottom. You can see they're color coded here. And this is actually a control surface for Wirecast from a company called XKeys, but they did a great way of logically kind of laying out the buttons. And these are basically hotkeys that can be used, oops, sorry, with Wirecast. So if you think about the layers, these five layers and the clear buttons right there, you've got five clear buttons and a lot of times you just want to clear all five and start over, right? And you build, then you build another production. So I've said this before, I'll say it again. Essentially, you need to come up with a plan on how you're going to use these layers. The bottom layer is the basically the lowest layer. And that layer should be all of your live camera sources because you're switching between those, but you may want to keep consistent and overlay, for example, uh, on top of the, all of the live camera feeds that you're working with. So that is why you would have a scoreboard, which we'll use in our example, above the cameras, and then you switch between the cameras, and the scoreboard really doesn't move throughout those, those changes. Uh, maybe you want to show a picture-in-picture, picture, or we'll look at some virtual sets in the future. That's kind of the understanding of how to use these different sources. Now, scenes up here that's what we're going to build and we're going to build an entire scene in a single shot and you'll learn how to do that as well which might be easier for you to just manage different scenes as well so i wanted to show that because it makes a lot of sense and then in each shot that we're working with there's a bunch of different properties that we can use and we'll go through the shots and we'll work with the different properties and kind of start to familiarize ourselves with the shot manager and everything that it can do. Um, and we'll go through all of that. We'll talk about kind of using the layering system and adding your logo, for example, on top of a video or a live preview. We'll talk about some common sources and, and how to use those, meaning screen captures, the overlays, the different backgrounds that you can use for your production. So let's dig right into this. So we'll kind of pick up where we left off. We've got a camera feed here. Let's do at least two camera feeds. Oh, look, we chose two of the exact same. So I'll just right click and hit delete. Let's choose. See, I have a lot of different cameras here. Okay. So we've got two camera feeds and we've got a scoreboard here. Let's add a media file and we'll browse to the disk here. Um, Let's choose, let's see, let's just choose a picture here. No screenshots. All right, something on the desktop. All right, let's choose this picture. So we'll do a full screen picture, say maybe kind of like as a PowerPoint. Now I can drag and drop these in different layers, okay? And I can even take a whole layer and move it up and down. So it's, it's very versatile. So if you needed to move something around uh, quickly and easily, you can do that. I would like to, uh, let's see here. This is a good one. I'll just put, this is like our, our YouTube subscribers. Um, I'll put that on the top. So that would be like an overlay that we want to come in. Now let's work top down. So I'm gonna use those clear buttons and just, just pick what I wanna work with. So first of all, let's work with this subscribe. Now you'll see right there, there's a name for it. And I really do like to, to stay, uh, Subscribe button. I like to stay, you know, organized by putting all of the different kind of names in here. So 
subscribe button and you'll see that changes what shows up in the uh, actual square inside of Wirecast. So you're a little limited on space, but you know that is your one chance to give yourself that little, you know, like writing on the wall of what you're working with. Um, so so use that name if you can. Now this is just a subscribe button. So I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, just kind of go through the shot layers with you, and then what we'll do is we'll build a secondary scene. We'll duplicate uh, a camera feed and build a second scene to show you how you can have the difference between building a live uh, preview window and cutting to that versus uh, building an entire scene. So in the shot properties area, we have the ability to just change the scale really quickly. I love this little dial here, it's perfect. So once we get it just right, just to what we want, let me move this over just a hair for you guys to see a little better, uh, we can lock it. So we can go ahead and say, all right, Let's go ahead and lock the fill and width. This is exactly how we want it. Um, so that will lock the width, lock the fill height. We can kind of lock all of this stuff. We can rotate it forward and backward to kind of give it some depth. I really like that. Looks kind of cool when you do that. A um, lot of things you can do to play with it and make it look better. I really like that, to be honest. Kind of pop it out to the side. So lots of cool stuff. You can actually add a reflection to it too. So just really cool ways to introduce your viewers to, you know, better style productions. Um, this mat is kind of interesting. You can put a overlay on top of this and you'll see here, you can actually overlay other uh, images as well. So pretty cool stuff there. I really like it. It's interesting uh, opportunities to add a bunch of value to your production. Uh, you can crop your images, which you know we always need to do from time to time. It looks like cropping on the right might make sense a little bit for this one. Cropping on the bottom and the top a little bit makes sense. Um, we have the ability to, oh, that's the crop. We have the ability to color. So this is good for webcams, especially if you just want to, change the brightness a little bit. Uh, I like to boost the contrast a little bit. We'll show that in a minute. Change the gamma, which is the color, the hue, again, more with the color and saturation, making the colors a little bit more vivid. You can reset that. You can also add a drop shadow. So just some really great effects for making things look you know, much better um, once you go through all of this. So take the time look at the shot properties. Now this is an image, so there's no audio, right? So we don't have to deal with it, it doesn't even come up. But in some of the other uh, video files that we'll look at, there will be images and uh, there'll be video. We'll, we'll take a look at those and you can adjust the audio there. A lot of times when you bring in an audio clip into a wirecast, you may uh, just be wanting to show it as an overlay and you don't want the audio with it. So you can just use the shot properties in the audio section to remove the volume completely. Now, next is the chroma key properties. And we're not gonna look at that here, but when we start talking about green screens and virtual sets, essentially you can remove any color uh, from any specific area. So if we drop that, now it's that part of that image is uh, see-through, and that is ideal for virtual sets. And we'll show some of the free virtual sets that we'll be working with in the future. Now, this is the smooth transition option. So if we want this to fade in to our production here, um, what we can do, if we want it to fade in from the middle, we hit the smooth button, and see how it just flies in from the left? That is because we chose fly in from left. So we want to go from the top left. Let's uh, go ahead over here. And it should go from smooth top left. I guess it's because it's already in there. So let's put it in, put it back. It comes from the left. So that's how what the build out does. And that's nice for just kind of tweaking the way that the smooth transitions operate. So that's the whole shot layers there. 
And what we'd like to do now is just start building out some, some layers. So building layers generally has to do with kind of like switching the camera underneath. And let's, you know, let's, let's say this is a, um, a basketball game or a baseball game. You can see here we want to, uh, we got one camera here and then we've got another camera here. Well, we're just switching between the cameras and let's do this in a cut because we want to do like a really smooth transition and we're just kind of doing some stuff real quick. And then we're saying, all right, I want to show the subscribers real quick. I would rather put that down there a little bit, move it. And that's the way the production's kind of working. So we're just doing live production. Let's get rid of the subscribe button. Okay, keep going. And that's the way a lot of people like to do their productions in Wirecast, right? They're on the fly, moving things around, doing what they got to do. And uh, that is the way this usually will work. Um, it's, you know, I'm going to fix this shots and layers. Oops. So that's the way the layering system works. That's the way the shots work. But what if we wanted to build a shot at, that is just a complete scene? that We don't need to clear all these layers and we don't need to build it every single time. Well, let's duplicate this shot here and let's change the name and we'll call it shot with. Just, I'm just going to call it shot with two. And with shot with two, what that means is we're going to hit the plus button this time. And we're actually going to add some additional things into this shot so that we don't have to. So we're going to add the subscribe button. So now the subscribe button is part of this production. It's part of this shot. So I don't need to do anything. It's always part of that shot. And then uh, let's add another thing. So we'll add, you know, uh, let's see, we'll add an, uh, another, um, what should we add? We could do a picture in picture, we could do a media file, because we did a media file already, we'll do another picture. So now we're just building a complete scene. So this is a complete scene inside of Wirecast that now we can just cut to it and everything's there, okay? We don't need to build it all out to build that same thing. We'd need to go like this and then take that and bring it over. Now, I do like having the ability to have each piece of material inside of its own shot because then you can do a lot more with it. But uh, if you just want to set up a couple quick scenes, it is easier to just have a pre-built shot. So I wanted you guys to understand kind of the differences between a pre-built shot that where you're adding shot layers inside of the shot manager versus building one with all the layers that, that Wirecast is capable of and then transitioning to what you just created. So hopefully that makes sense. We're about to move on to our next video in our unofficial guide to Wirecast series. I hope you guys like it. Let me know about the comments and we're going to go step by step all the way through this book together. So I hope you enjoy it.